Hey, today we are going to review our second-hand Rand McNally Overdrive 8 Pro GPS tablet, and we'll get to that coming up right after this. Hey, good afternoon. We are finally going to get around to doing a review of our Rand McNally Overdrive Pro 8 tablet, or whatever it's called. This thing <laughs> right here. Um, I'm going to go over some of the features, some of the things that I like, didn't like, that we've uh, noticed some quirks with it. Uh, overall, we're very happy with the tablet. Uh, it is a 8-inch screen, glass screen. That's what I like about it the most. <laughs> very nice tablet. The screen works really, really well. Uh, very responsive, very bright very quick and uh, it's very similar to the older GPS's we had we've had the TND 710 720 first generation tablet and now this thing um, so uh, it works pretty well but we'll get into that and I'll show you some features here and then we'll come back and have some final thoughts sounds right good. sounds good so here we go all right so we're actually here with the GPS and this is the home screen of the unit that comes up uh, we, like I said, we only use the GPS basically as a GPS, but there are quite a few other tools that are included in here, and we'll just sort of go through a few of those right now. Uh, under the Communications tab, you can click on this, where you can actually set this up to connect to a phone, um, where it will connect to your Bluetooth on your actual headset. You'll be able to get phone calls or read text messages that come through on your phone. We've never set that up, obviously. Uh, it does have a built-in dash cam, and you can connect a uh, Ram McNally, it's a wireless cam that connects through this um, to use as a back cam. We've never set that up again, but it is there. Um, I've taken a look at the driving or the dash cam on this system. It's not the greatest in the world. Um, and we just, you know, we already have the Garmin dash cam that we use all the time anyway. So it's another feature we don't use, but it is on here. Uh, Driver Connect. This will actually allow you to connect one of the Ram McNally uh, ELD units into this and use this as your actual ELD. It's a pretty nice feature, but of course we have, our carrier has built in ELD logs on our truck, so we don't need that either. So again, something else that we've never used. <laughs> Noticing a trend here? Okay. Under your entertainment tab, this actually has a built-in Sirius radio. You can use that. You can also connect uh, media off your phone. Uh, or you can listen to, you know, uh, you can put stuff on the SD card that you can put in this or, or whatever. Again, something else we don't use, but it is a feature of the, of the unit itself. Under truck tools, there's quite a few handy things in here. Uh, this is where you actually go into the settings, and I'll do this in a little bit. The settings where you actually set up your truck as far as uh, if you're hauling hazmat or the length and width and weight of your truck. You can set that up in there. Um, there is a, several other apps in here. Uh, there's a fuel mileage manager. Um, you know, you can take notes. There's a calendar. There's a calculator that we use uh, from time to time. There is a converter. This is really awesome. There is quite a few different uh, conversions that are available in here. Like this is for temperature right here. We do use that. Uh, if you go up here to the menu, and like I said, this is an Android tablet. All kinds of different things mass and weight you know fuel consumption uh, so if you're traveling in and out of Canada you know works out pretty well uh, quite a bit more extensive than what was in the previous one that we had you can see all the various different categories that are here so we do use that and that's one thing I really do like it is much more extensive than what was in our previous GPS which basically had about seven or eight different conversions that you can do back under the truck tool tab um, like I said, there is a trip planner in here. We've never used that. Uh, you know, there's quite a bit that we haven't actually used on this. Uh, one of the things we do use from time to time, this actually has a copy of the Ram McNally uh, Motor Carrier's Route Atlas, which is really good, the Trucker's Atlas, basically. Uh, and it's just a, essentially a PDF version that's on here for the various different states. Uh, like if we go to Florida... And this is basically just a page right out of the Ram McNally Atlas. But this is the Trucker Atlas that has the routes and shows you all the way stations, the little red dots, and the truck approved routes within the state. 
So very, very handy, and you don't have to carry around that big, heavy 10-pound Atlas, which we still do, but this is really nice. It's a nice feature of the app. And, of course, this is the updated version, so every year, you you know, if you update it, it gives the latest and greatest Atlas. Um, and then, finally, under Truck Tools, like I said, this is where you would come and set up your truck info. Although, I think this took us right into the GPS. <coughs> but this is where you would set up your information on your truck, your hazmat type, if you're hauling. Now, if you come in here and you change this to a... Uh, Another, it'll throw up a ha maintenance reminder at the beginning. Um, but if you are hauling a type of hazmat, if you come in here and choose this, when it goes back, it'll recalculate your route and throw in your hazmat routings. Pretty nice. But this basically is you set up all your information on your vehicle here. We're a two-axle truck, gross weight of 33,000 pounds, 13.6 uh, tall, you know, 8.6 wide. And then back to this page, you can change preferences for your route and uh, where you can allow freeways. One thing that we noticed with ours, we had freeways set to prefer. Well, it, it would take you out of the way sometimes because it did not want you to get off the interstate highways, so we changed that back to allow all. Um, but different settings for tunnels, ferries, your route, fastest route, tollways. So basically this is where you come to set up everything. Click on the map tab. Uh, you can change, there's some settings here where you can have different uh, points of interest. Whether we have our set to where we allow the truck points of interest, which are like the way stations and truck stops. There is also regular point of interest icons, and those will show up like 10,000 Walmarts and whatever else that's on there, so we keep that off. Has lane guidance where it'll show you, you know, which lane you should be in when you're approaching a major intersection. We keep our route, you can change the color of that. We keep ours to where it really shows up on the map. And then warnings, this will tell you if you're approaching intersections, way stations, all kinds of different things. And there's settings within these to where you can adjust how many miles you want these sent out to you. And the alerts on, we have ours set to audio and visual, so it will actually throw up a little message across the bottom of the screen and it will give you a, a warning, essentially. So we close back out of those. Now it's taking me back into the GPS itself go back out there is a small button on the very top of the screen and that will take you back out to the main menu so we're going to take a look now at the GPS the portion of the of the GPS we actually use that's a picture of us we are actually in Elkton Maryland at the moment at the TA and if I hit the zoom right here on this side uh, it basically gives you a scale of what you're seeing the scale is based off this small indicator right here so that distance is a half a mile to give you a little bit of an idea so you can zoom out. Touchscreen is very, very responsive. Uh, a big upgrade from the previous GPSs we had. I mean, it is essentially a fairly decent Android tablet, and so the touchscreen works very well. Uh, that is one thing I've been highly impressed with. Uh, you don't have to do very much. And a nice feature too, it acts just like a tablet, where you can actually pinch and spread apart to zoom in. And you can see while I'm doing that, there's like a little target that shows up. If I actually put that where I want, so you don't actually have to have the address. If you just know where you're going, and then if I hold that, it will pop this up, which will allow me to go ahead and route right to that spot. So if you know where you're going, and for whatever reason you don't have the address, but you just know where it's at on the map, that's another way to put in your thing. So I'll just go over a few things here. Uh, this little button here toggles your informational displays across the bottom on and off. And by default, this doesn't come up. So every time we want to look, we have to push on that. But it will have your clock across the bottom. This here will actually display three different things. It's like a toggle. Well, at least it used to be. Um, to where it would show where you're at or the road you're on or the city you're in. Your speedometer here. There's some settings here for your route. Uh, so if you want to cancel your route that you're on, you can actually come in here and hit cancel. You can actually save your current location and then put it into your address book. If you're on a road that you never ever want to be on again, then you can hit permanent avoid and it will put that into a section of your GPS where you can avoid certain cities or routes or states. And then your route settings itself takes you back to um, basically the screen that was on the beginning there that we already looked at. So close back out of that. Uh, 
a lot of places on the screen you can touch and we'll bring up different things uh, this is basically your information display it'll tell you where you're at what time it is one of the thing I love to use is it will tell you your sunrise and your sunset time so in the winter time or winds in the summer you know I can always tell since I drive at night how long it's going to be before I start seeing the sun it gives your latitude and your longitude your speedometer uh, your trip that you're on and you can reset these of course we'll show just some informational displays we have found that this doesn't match uh, the odometer in our truck the odometer in our truck says we travel a few more miles than, than what the GPS does I don't really know which one is right but uh, you know we have to go by the one on the truck uh, here you can also see the elevation that is fairly accurate uh, so it's just sort of neat if you're out in the Rocky Mountains and you're 15,000 feet or whatever um, you can keep track of your fuel through here we don't use that feature uh, and if you're at some place you can actually save where you're at to your address book and there's various different trip selections through here and you can see some of the information it gives you here moving the total average moving maximum speed this is wrong <laughs> just telling you it's wrong uh, so like I said so use those at your own uh, peril I guess uh, so we'll just reset all those. We'll go back out to the main screen of the GPS. Um, the feature here is for exits, and it will tell you what is actually uh, on the exits that are coming up. And of course, we don't have a route in here, so it's not going to show us anything at the moment. Um, but I'll put a route in, and then we'll show you what shows up there. This here uh, basically will allow you to select various different uh, things that the map is capable of overlaying. You have to have this connected to Wi-Fi for it to work. In fact, there's a lot of features in this that you have to have it hooked up to your Wi-Fi in your truck, so you would need a constant connection for it to properly work. Uh, you can find fuel, you can look at the weather, and you can look at traffic. And there's various different settings within, so you, you get an overlay here for the weather or it will show you fuel prices which for us doesn't really is not accurate because of you know we get a discount and you can actually see traffic now my mine is actually hooked up to an internet connection at the moment so you can see the route turns uh, green so that is very handy to have on but just be aware it does use data very similar to what you would see on Google Maps in fact it's probably overlaying the same data that you would see on Google Maps uh, so if we zoom out here give it just a little bit of time to fill in you can see the uh, the traffic so I mean this is this is handy to have in all truthfulness we usually keep this off um, because it just uh, it's just another piece of you know trying to use the data as we're going down the highway um, the weather portion will overlay um, you can choose various different uh, things that you want overlaid on the map like the radar this currently has the temperature and as you can see it will start to fill in it's not really that very fast and right now we have a fairly decent internet connection so you know it's a great feature I guess but it's sort of slow and pokey so we don't really use it that much um, great idea but the implementation you know leaves a little bit to be desired um, this little button right here in the middle if you click on that that basically takes you back to where you're at so that's sort of like your home button and you can see now to put in a route you have two or three different ways I can actually come up here in the upper left hand corner it's sort of hard to see you can see the little hourglass and this is actually a little microphone button um, so it actually has voice command in the, in the way that you can actually search via destination or a city just going into that so I'm gonna push that where can I take you Cincinnati Ohio and you can see it will bring up Cincinnati Ohio we have had mixed success with this um, because sometimes it will actually pick up it's fairly good about picking up the address that you give it but then it, it can't find it and this only works if you're hooked up to the Wi-Fi and you have an internet connection for whatever reason it will not work if you're not hooked up you can also search for different you know basically truck services rest areas way stations along the way 
So if I hit navigate, very similar to what we've seen in the past on our other GPSs, it will find two different routes, uh, one that has uh, no taxes and, or tolls and one that will show you tolls. And usually we have found that one of them is really, really far out of your way. So we're going to click on this, the fastest route. It shows up green because it's got tolls. The blue doesn't have tolls. We'll click this. Oh, start navigation. And it will build us a route. Proceed to the highlighted route. We'll tell you to proceed to the highlighted route. And if you scroll out, you can see where it's taking us. It's taking us back down to Baltimore, out 70, across over to Breezewood, and across 70. So actually it's not. Oh, it's taking us Cincinnati. I'm sorry. I was looking at Columbus. This is Cincinnati. And you can see it shows up on the map, uh, all the rest areas, all the way stations you have to go through. So it, those were the truck specific uh, POI icons that I was talking about earlier. And like this is the rest area here. Usually if you try, it's sort of difficult to click on the icons, but if you do manage to click on one, it will show you some information about that particular icon. But of course I'm not going to be able to do that. So that is one way of trying to find a route. Uh, and if you come up here again and go back into the bar, this is like the, the new version where you can find uh, truck services. So let's just see if we can find a truck stop. It will bring up a list along your route. So of course we're setting at the TA in Elkton. So here's the Flying J's that are down the road. And you can scroll through this. Just a, a listing of different services. Here's the parking and rest areas. It will build that list. Now this is along your route. Now you can change this nearby and along route. This does have the ability to go back in and search the way that we're used to on the prior GPSs we've had where if you come over to guided search, click that. This brings up a screen that we're familiar with from the older style Ram McNally GPSs. And this allows us to search on a location. We can pull entries out of our address book um, and the points of interest or even our history. So if I go into point of interest, I have choices to find a point of interest near my truck, along my route, near my destination, or my city. So if I click destination, which is Cincinnati, and of course travel centers, cat scales, uh, dealers, truck services, parking areas, and of course there's a whole slew of other categories in here, including motels, airports, shopping centers. But if I go back here, and let's just say I want to find a truck stop near Cincinnati, that'll give me a list from my destination. So if I wanted to go to the TA in Florence, I'd click there. I can add that as a via where I can make that my actually new route where I'm going to. And of course for each one of these you can save it to the address book. So like if I wanted to make sure that I went to the TA in Florence first, I'd click here, add as via. I can add it to the start of the trip. I can add it to the end of the trip where I can actually go in and manually reorder the trip to where I would select Cincinnati first here, move that up, hit OK and then it will recalculate my route. Proceed to the highlighted route. Yeah, there's some other information like here. This is what I told you earlier. Uh, this informational area at the bottom down here does not show up unless you click that little icon. And then of course your information along your exits that are upcoming that will show you some information here. And we can also go here, and that's the overlay for the informational overlays. Um, this is the settings here. This will tell you how many miles to your destination and the approximate arrival time. Now we have ours. There's some different settings you can have in here. We have ours set up so that it shows the arrival at our yard time, which is Eastern time for us. So if we were traveling out into, let's just say we were going to Denver, 
the arrival time would still show up Eastern time for us because that's just the way we like to have it set. Um, you can change it over to have it local time. There's actually some different settings here. Yard arrival time, the arrival time would be the local arrival. You can display the remaining time, um, the yard time, the elevation. So we'll keep this back here to yard arrival. And for the total trip, so total trip 605 miles will arrive at 2 o'clock in the morning on February 3rd, which is tomorrow since today is the second. Happy Groundhog's Day. Uh, that setting icon will take you right back into the system where you can adjust the settings for your individual truck. Uh, these are the general settings for the GPS. But from what we found, everything seems to work pretty well. It routes remarkably similar to the prior GPSs we've had, and it does have some quirks. It will uh, take you places sometimes that you question its uh, routing ability. Um, I know the one thing that we have always sort of wondered about, like in this case right here, it's going to take you through downtown Baltimore, uh, which we would prefer to go around 695. Um, you know, there's just some quirky things about this. Uh, it's just something you have to get used to over time. Uh, and like through Columbus, like obviously there's no settings where you can adjust to where you prefer to go around the outer belts of cities. So in this case, it will take you through downtown Columbus instead of taking you around 270, you know, and then into our destination in Cincinnati. But overall, it seems to do a pretty decent job. Um, we have... Um, noticed a few oddities along the way. Um, like I said, uh, a lot of times if we're in Indianapolis and we want to go to Columbus, it will take us through Cincinnati and up for whatever reason. Um, no rhyme or reason to it. It's just something you get used to. Um, we've also noticed that at times, of course, we, we set the height in here and it will give you a height warning if you're going to be on a road that it knows about that has a low clearance. Um, but we have also found that uh, it's sort of a quirk with this GPS and all the RAN GPSs. If we're traveling down a road and there is a sign for low clearance on a side road, uh, it seems like they know about all of the cl clearances by these signs. So even though it will say, you know, warning, low clearance, um, it could actually mean that they've seen the sign going down the side street. So. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, not all the things work out. And, of course, you never, ever want to uh, rely completely on your GPS, especially with low clearances or weight limits on roads um, that you don't want to be on. And like I said, if you click that button, it will recenter back to your thing um, where you need to go. There is a compass reading up here that you can change the orientation of your route. We keep ours set this way, which is north always up. If you change it this way, it will actually follow the direction of your truck. It just so happens we're facing north at the moment. Uh, so this would actually, your truck would remain stationary here, and then the map will rotate around as you're going. And then this is your 3D view. And the 3D view is pretty decent. The one thing I've noticed, the maps are much higher quality on this unit than on the prior units, especially when you get in close. Uh, there's a lot more detail within the maps themselves. So all in all, nice little GPS. We really sort of enjoy using it. Uh, it works better and faster than our old one. As you can see, there's I'm moving around here, there's really no lag. Um, and I really like the way the screen, that's got to be the biggest improvement is the actual screen itself. I don't know if you're aware, the prior tablet, we had the original first generation uh, RAN tablet before this one, and the screen was actually polarized. So if you had on polarized sunglasses, the screen was black. Uh, you could not see anything on the screen. That is not the case on this tablet. Um, I, we actually got this used, as I said. Um, and so it did not have the protective polarizing screen filter on top of it, uh, which comes in the box from what I'm told. Uh, so I don't know if that would, you know, 
uh, prevent you from being able to see the screen but I mean it was literally if you had polarized sunglasses on the screen was black um, so but I guess that's our take on this and uh, we'll go back and talk a little bit more about it and uh, we'll see you in just a bit okay. just like that we're back we're back <laughs> here we are uh, and here's our little tablet again, again right there it is so I guess overall I'm pretty pleased with it I'm happy I think it's a definite upgrade to the tablet we had before yeah uh, it's I, it took me a while to get used to yeah. because I use this you know just for guidance for directions but when I need to stop for my half hour break and and that kind of stuff I had to I had to figure we had to figure out how to get to the steps we always were able to get at because I got to the point where I never had to look at the tablet to touch my buttons right and I do not like there looking a, at it there's while I'm like driving. an extra step in here to get to wherever and if to you just want to get to the some, old menu to get to the old menu which we're familiar with and have been using for years we have to hit this button and it brings up your search for you know for your points of interest and your different categories but then we have to actually go over here to get back to the menu that we're familiar with yeah. and are used to using. And before it was a one-step process, now we got to hit two buttons. But um, if I would just look at the first screen, I could, you know, and get used to doing it that way, it's it's the other screen where it has the truck services and then the where it's listed right underneath the search bar. Right, right. You know, I'm just not used to doing it that way, and I've got to get back, you know, because that would take actually less clicks, yeah, probably. This, what she's talking about here is then we have a route, and I showed you I added the route to Cincinnati in here. So if you come back in here and just click here, you know, it will bring up a list of your, you know, your upcoming, upcoming truck stops or truck on stops. the way truck stops. You right. Know? Which so, then I always just like click on it and go, and then it just takes me and you add as via or whatever you need right, to do. Right. So as far as it is much, much, much faster than the old GPSs we had. The screen is much more responsive. It's it just feels nice. It's it's you know a better quality screen. And before we got this one, our other one was really <sighs> bad because it wasn't picking up routings and everything like that. So oh. for us, this is just like. Yeah, much you know, night and day. Much better. But uh, the other one worked well originally. And yeah. It, and then it just lost wherever it was at all the time. It was yeah, constantly this is, recalculating. This is and, the fourth GPS that we have had. Uh, it is by far a bigger step from the last one we had to this one. Of course, it was five years old, the old tablet we had. Uh, but this just seems much more modern, much more up to date. But it's very familiar. It 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 we it's not a huge learning curve for us, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of why we stuck with it versus yeah. going to a different type of GPS. There's just a few things that are a little different, but nothing that's really, really major. And we haven't really struggled with trying to learn a new GPS system, which is one of the reasons why we didn't go with another brand. Yeah, It's just like with your phones, you know, when you update and upgrade, you know, there's always a little bit of a learning curve, but everything's pretty much the same, but there's always things they've changed to make it better. And that's what you have to get used to. Uh, we did a, a video, and I'll link it up here below, uh, above, not below, above, uh, about the mounting. Now, these things have a notorious problem with mounting. It's actually the mount that comes with this. These little pins right here are actually um, where it charges uh, from a base, and it's magnetic. And they're sort of notorious for falling off. The base itself is made out of plastic. It's an arm that comes up, and on the end of that arm, there are three little pins. Well, and they're made out of plastic, and they break. Mm -hmm. When we got this GPS, we got it secondhand, and the mounting was actually broke. If you go back and look at that prior video, you'll see what I had to come up with, uh, an arm mounting system that we actually hooked into our prior mount that we had on the dash. And we don't use the satellite either, which was part of that, right? Right, right. We don't use the satellite because it, it has a, a big old huge giant antenna for the XM radio, which we don't use. Um, so yeah, we had to mess around with that, but that has been the, the by far the biggest complaint, the mounting system for this, people really, really complain about now. But the way you have it mounted now, works good for well, us so far, so good. Um, <laughs> but you also have to keep it plugged in. We have to keep it plugged in because it's not charging from these pins back here, but this just takes a regular micro SD card, plug it right in here into the side, either which way it goes in, one way or the other. And the uh, right plug. And the right plug. <laughs> Uh, so we just keep it plugged in. We just use a phone charger that came with it. Uh, the actual base itself has a plug that goes into the cigarette lighter, so we just use a regular phone charger because the cigarette lighter charges the back here, 
uh, and we just don't use that. So yeah, that's what we had to do, a little bit of getting around it. Uh, there is a slot for a micro SD card in the end here, a um, few little buttons, a power button right along the top. And we were, and I, Jim mentioned it in the other video, we do not take full advantage of everything that's no, on this. by and, far. And there are probably drivers out there and people out there who use every, every part of this. Um, we've just gotten used to, because we have other other types of technology that we use, uh, our radio, we both use our phones um, with our headsets, you know, when we're um, doing, or driving down the road. What are you showing? Well, I'm just going to show the, the dash cam. So here's the dash cam, as you can see. Hi, Judy. It's just like she's there. <laughs> uh, but this is one of the things that we don't use, is the dash cam, and to me, you know, it's not. That's quite also a, partially the way you have it mounted too. Right. We like it right there There's by the steering wheel. No way to change the direction that this is pointed at. Uh, you have to actually change it by the way you mount the, the GPS. Or the way itself. you sit. You can't change the road. Right. <laughs> so anyway, so that like she said, there's portions of this we just do not use. Uh, probably never will use. But we're very pleased with the GPS portion. Yeah. So uh, I guess we'll uh, continue on with it for a while till mm -hmm. they come out with the next version of this but uh, yeah we're we sort of like the GPS and we've updated it a couple times since or we've gotten it or it's updated itself I'm not sure if we have it on automatic yeah updates, we actually but. have a the ability that we have an always on Wi-Fi connection in the truck and this is hooked into that and uh, I guess that is one of the drawbacks is you cannot use the voice search feature unless it's hooked up to Wi-Fi uh, which is sort of you know a pain for a lot of people that don't have fortunate enough to have the always on internet that we have in our truck. Yeah, um, and that's a whole another video. <laughs> yeah, whole whole another internet. video. <laughs> we'll do so. one of those at some point in time. So I guess at your rating out of five stars, what would you give it? I would probably give it a four. I don't know. That's about what I was thinking yeah. uh, because there's some features that are missing. The mounting system is is not very good, honestly. Um, and for us, we would rather, honestly, just have, rather have a GPS that, uh, you know, these are not cheap. Um, I wish we just had the ability just to have a GPS that was on <laughs> par with this. Now, Rand makes a GPS, but it's the older style. The screen's not as good. Um, the touch is not as good, and it just, you know, it's, it's just an older, antiquated feel to it. Why don't you just make one of these? that just has the GPS on it because that's really but there. And again, it's all in what you need. And yeah. we, we just, we have with our carrier, we have other options for our ELD and, and those type of things, which we pay for too. Right. <laughs> so right. we don't need the other stuff, but right. anyway. So I guess wraps it up. We're okay with it. Two thumbs up, about a four out of a five star. Uh, put it up. <laughs> and uh, so anyway. So if you like videos like this, please like our channel, like this video, give us a comment, let us know what you think. Yes. And we will see you all in the next video. So long, everybody. Good night.